Alright guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another Transfer Daily. Now before we get started in this video, make sure you go and check out my Chelsea preview for the weekend. Go and comment your score predictions. Also, if you haven't already, in the link down below there is our social media pages where you can stay up to date with the latest West Brom transfer news and stuff like that. Um, you know, go down to the link, you'll see our Twitter, our Facebook and our Instagram. Go and give us a follow on there and we'll follow you back. Um, now to kick things off, some really good news, um, a lot of people reporting this, Joe Massey reporting it, um, Joe Chapman reporting it and even Slaven Bilic himself has actually come out in his press conference for Chelsea and said this one's going to happen. Now we all know how much everyone wanted Filip Kravinovic back, now got some brilliant news guys, um, the, we're expected to sign him this week by the end of this week. Which is absolutely fantastic news. Freddie's been saying all along that he's confident we'll get this deal over the line. And it does look like it's going to happen. Now, I have heard that Kravinovic is going to be signing a new contract with Benfica before he does join. Or something like that, apparently. It kind of reminds me of what happened with Conor Gallagher. You know, he signed a new deal for Chelsea and then he went straight to uh, West Brom on loan. Now, for me, brilliant bit of business. It is a loan deal. I'm not sure if there's an obligation to buy him anymore. I just think it's a straight loan, um, which is good enough, to, in my opinion. I thought in the Cup games last year um, against the Premier League opposition like West Ham, I thought Filip Kravinovic was very good. I think towards the end of the season, last season, I thought Kravinovic was really good. He linked up well with uh, Mateus Pereira, Dian Garner and Robinson, who all seem to have a really good friendsh friendship on and off the pitch. Now, Bilic has said that he does expect him to um, not make the squad this weekend against Chelsea, but he'll be here next week to train with his new teammates. And like I say, guys, absolutely fantastic news for us. I'm delighted with that one. Um, for me, I always wanted Kravinovic back. You know, he's a very good player, but now that we've got Kravinovic in, I think we should turn our attentions to two strikers. Um, apparently, talks, according to Joe Chapman, talks for Karl Grant are still going on. He remains Bilic's number one target and his number one priority, uh, which is right in my opinion. We do need a goal scorer. We need someone young, energetic, with a bit of pace up front. We haven't really got that many mobile strikers at the minute with Robson Carnu, Austin and Zahor. Um, and it'll give us that option up front, you know, Z Z um, Carl and Grant's still really young, um, I think he's 22 or 23 years of age, which is still a good age, you know, he's a very good player in the championship, scores a lot of goals in the championship, hopefully he can make the step up into the Premier League, but like I said, two new strikers for me, I'd be happy with Carl and Grant and Dini, or Carl and Grant and Mbaye Niang from Rennes, I'd be happy with either two, um, but we do definitely need a goal scorer after this Chelsea game because the games what are a bit more winnable are coming up. You know, we've got the likes of Southampton. I'm not saying they're going to be easy because they're not, but, you know, we do need to start looking at winning those sort of games if we're going to stay in the league. Um, on top of that, West Brom, apparently, <laughs> this is a load of BS in my opinion. Um, Watford winger, attacker, Ishmaelia Saar, I think that's how you say his first name. No, he was absolutely brilliant for them last season and he's got the likes of Liverpool, um, a few other top teams chasing him and apparently West Brom have entered the race to sign him. No, I do not believe this one, if I'm being completely honest with you guys. You know, there's a £50 million pound price tag on him according to Sport Witness and I think it's an absolutely ludicrous valuation yet again. Um, you know, I know he had a good season. I know he's young, but for me, he's definitely not worth fifty million. Uh, the likes of West West Brom, Crystal Pal Palace, and Aston Villa, and a few top teams like Liverpool are all interested in him. But you know, I you can be interested in anything in life. It doesn't mean you're gonna get it. You know, I'm interested in becoming a millionaire, but it doesn't mean I'm gonna become a millionaire. If that makes sense. So, you know, I I wouldn't pay too much attention to these links. Um, of SAR, I really wouldn't because I just don't see how it's doable. You know, we're struggling to afford Carl and Grant for 15 million. So, how on earth are we going to buy a 50 million rated player? It's just beyond me. But, you know, it just shows how la lazy journalism and journalists actually get. You know, they report anything to get a story out there. But 
Guys, let me know in the comment section what you think of Kravinovich coming back. Let me know what you think of Carl and Grant. And let me know what you think of the, uh, well, the bullshit of um, Saar coming. But if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Check out our socials down below and we'll see you in the next one.